Paramount are not just planning one bad robot Star Trek movie. They're planning two. And it's going to be a prequel. Oh, for f Welcome to Side Trek, your sci fi TV and movie channel. Okay, so it is being widely reported, um, and Deadline were the first ones to report it, that Paramount Pictures are apparently planning two Star Trek movies that will go straight to cinema. These are not the movies being planned by Secret Hideout. These Those will be straight to Paramount Plus. So this isn't Section 31 and the Picard movie. It is something else. Something that is being produced, according to this article, by Bad Robot. Now, they do have a fair few details about this new movie. So what is the first film? It's obviously going to be the Star Trek IV, the Chris Pine film that I've told you is bubbling in the background. I'm going to tell you what I think about this and why I think this article isn't what it seems, by the way, in a minute. But first of all, I'll just tell you what the rumour is. So according to this report, it is going to be a film that will be directed by Toby Haynes. He's the guy that did Andor. And the script is being written by Seth Graham Smith, who is the guy that did um, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, which is a film that's actually underrated. I actually quite like that movie. And the Lego Batman movie. So, hey, there you go. Um, this film apparently is going to be set decades before the original J.J. Abrams 2009 Star Trek movie and will exist still within the Kelvin timeline. So here's my first issue. If it's going to be decades before the 2009 movie, I assume they mean the events of the bulk of the movie. You know, the actual Chris Pine part of the movie. Because the film starts decades before that. It starts with Chris Henworth's character, Kirk's dad, dying aboard the Kelvin. That's when the timelines split. So if it's still a Kelvin timeline movie, it's actually got to be set within that time period. Between the start of the film and the rest of the film. Now, I know I've been being a little bit pedantic there, but, I mean, be accurate. That's one of my big problems with J.J. Abrams' Star Trek is they're not accurate. So when they say it's set decades before the events of the 2009 movie, but it's still within the Kelvin timeline, that's what they mean. They've also called this an origin story. That also fills me with terror. So let's speculate a little bit about what we think that might mean. So... As I say, it's got to be after the destruction of the Kelvin. Are we going to see a young Kirk, a young Spock, etc. again? Maybe them going through school. That would be good. No, it wouldn't. It would be awful. Or is this going to be the events of some other part of Star Trek? Now, I would hope it would be the events of some other part of Star Trek. Because that would make sense. It's a big universe, after all. It's a big galaxy. There are plenty of other stories to tell. But will they? Well, I doubt it, because let's look at the evidence. It seems that every time anything is new with Star Trek, and particularly in the new Trek, they have to try and tag it back to Kirk and Spark and everyone else. They did it with Discovery. They did it with, obviously, Strange New Worlds. So the evidence suggests they will try and tag it back to the origins of the Enterprise again within the Kelvin timeline. Maybe we'll see a bit more of Pike. But again, that's not decades before. That would have to be when Kirk and Spark, etc. were kids. So if that is where they're going with this, and this is going to be a Star Trek in primary school thing, that is going to be awful. I, I, I would really struggle to even get excited to watch it. But we don't know that's what they're planning. That is just pure speculation and based on what they've done previously. This could be something that is going to build up towards something else within the Star Trek universe. So how confident am I? Low. My confidence in this is low. But do I even think this is going to happen? Well, I know, and I've told you guys several times, that there are different voices at Paramount Global at the moment about Star Trek. And there are very high up executives, according to a source that I speak to, that actually is linked to Paramount. There are very high up executives at Paramount Global that think Star Trek in the TV universe alone, what Secret Hideout is producing, is too complicated. 
There are too many different timelines going on. There's jumping in through history. And for the casual viewer, which according to their demographics accounts for about a third of all the Star Trek viewers. So these are people that just jump in and out of Star Trek, don't necessarily watch it week in, week out, wouldn't consider themselves to be Trekkies. It's confusing for that third and it disengages them. It harms the franchise because they can watch one show, then watch another show and not have any clue what's going on because they're in completely different, you know, 500 years apart sort of thing. But then you've got the animated stuff, which is also in slightly different timelines, even though it's more in line with sort of original Trek, you know, the Brana Trek sort of thing. So it is confusing for the casual viewer who just want to come in and out of the tr who want to just watch it every so often. That isn't an issue for me, but when it accounts for a third of your viewers, it is an issue for executives that write checks over at Paramount. Now, it was these executives that were arguing against Star Trek IV, and what basically killed it last time when it was announced uh, a year, 18 months ago, um, uh, when that announcement came out that surprised all the actors because Chris Pine, etc., didn't know that they were doing it. And they're the people that have really put the um, motion picture idea on the back burner with Bad Robot. There is also, though, another problem. Bad Robot does actually have an exclusivity deal with Warner Brothers at the moment. They cannot do anything without Warner Brothers' permission. Now, it does seem that they are allowed to do other things, but only if Warner Brothers say they can. So when they signed this deal in 2009, they were allowed to complete certain projects like Star Wars, etc. That was written into the contract. But Bad Robot have not actually managed to produce anything, really, for Warner Brothers. In the five years since they signed this deal, they've produced no major television shows and no major movies. They've been involved in a couple of projects, but not actually produced anything. Now, it's not totally their fault. There was a little thing called COVID and then a little thing called nearly a year's worth of strikes. But still, in a five-year period, Warner Brothers have given them $250 million and had no return. Now, apparently that deal was actually a five-year deal, so it will run out this August. Now, that is important, and I'm going to come back to it in a second. So, they have this exclusivity deal. So, why would Bad Robot even be talking to Paramount at the moment, unless they've got permission from Warner Brothers, which they might have? Well, it does seem, actually, that J.J. Abrams is allowed to work independently from Bad Robot. So... When actually Star Trek IV was announced a little while ago, it would have been Secret Hideout producing it, and J.J. Abrams just attached as a producer. Now, this is not what this article is saying. This article is saying that this movie will be produced by Bad Robot. So why? I don't think this leak to Deadline has come from Paramount. I think this leak has come from Bad Robot. As I say, the people I speak to who actually do have really good connections over at Paramount are telling me there is very little interest in a movie that would go straight to cinema right now. They are working with Secret Hideout. They have a plan over the next five years, and that is the plan they're pushing. They do not, even though the Star Trek IV has not actually been cancelled, there are no major plans to run with it at the moment. But Bad Robot has an exclusivity deal with Warner Brothers that ends in around seven months. So for me, this sounds like this is a bad robot plan, not a Paramount plan. Paramount Global have not shut the door on this completely. So I think bad robot are leaking this information because they're trying to kick that door in. They want to produce two Star Trek movies. They are even going as far as preparing scripts and lining up directors and that the idea is to convince Paramount to do it. I think they are meeting some resistance, definitely from at least some parts of the executive board, and this is their way of trying to leverage the deal a little bit. As soon as their deal with Warner Brothers is done, they need to start picking up other projects, and this it might be their way. They are desperately hoping not just to get another Star Trek 4 with Chris Pine, etc. They're hoping to get this prequel movie as well. I think J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot, though, are going to have a small problem. Paramount are not going to be taking any major risks in the next, you know, 12 months or so. They're not going to sign on $150 million, $300 million to invest in two Star Trek movies, particularly after Star Trek Beyond did so badly. 
they are really going to have to have a unanimous support from executives high up at Paramount to get this agreed. This is not the sort of project, considering Paramount's current business problems, that Paramount are going to sign off on, in my opinion. When Paramount and its potential merger with Warner Brothers actually goes through, then maybe that would be a different thing. And let's be honest here, this deal, Bad Robot, may be actually raising this because of the close relationship between Paramount and Warner Brothers and the hope that maybe that is how this will get made. Their exclusivity deal won't matter then if Warner Brothers are actually co-producing it. But that is not the case right now. And that is a long way off, potentially. This merger with Warner Brothers is going to take a long time to happen, even if it ever does. It's got to go through things like the FTC to get approved, and that is not a foregone conclusion. There are also potentially other interested parties like Apple, who would be very interested in maybe buying the studio element of Paramount at very least. So my point here is the Paramount don't know what the next 12 months is going to look like. And they're going to be a little bit risk averse during that period. And a new Star Trek movie straight to cinema with Bad Robot is a risk. Now, you guys know me. I am not a hate clicker. I don't do videos saying this is going to be awful and this is going to be rubbish. I try to have an honest channel. I try to be honest about my opinions. I don't worry about clicks too much. I worry about being, you know, honest. So if I tell you I have concerns about this, it's because it's genuine. And to be honest, a lot of people are going to share those opinions. So if you're positive about this, that's great. I'm really hoping that you love whatever is produced, if it ever happens. But look at the other comments. Trekkies are going to be probably quite divided on this plan. But saying that, get into the comments and tell me what you think. Because this is a community and what we all think is what matters, not just what I say. So get into the comments and tell me exactly what you think about this idea. A prequel Star Trek within the Kelvin timeline. How would that even work and where would it be set? What would it be about? Dear God, that makes me just, I oh, just, no, I, I just hate that idea. But we need more details. Let's wait and see what they're actually planning first before we <laughs> widely condemn it. And the Star Trek 4 movie. Do you ever think it's going to happen? Because I'm not convinced. Get into the comments and tell me exactly what you think. Don't forget that most of our new videos do actually premiere on Patreon first. So go over to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack. You can watch it without the adverts. And for a small contribution that supports the channel, you even get a free gift. Can't argue with that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. And also go to sidetrack.co.uk, which is our dedicated website. And we do articles based on most of our videos. So we try to add a little bit more information for you to digest. Go check it out. As always, please stay safe and I'll see you next time.